All right, Justin, we're back and we're gonna continue uh, down this series here. This this is where the fun starts, in my opinion. Uh, we've I been would agree. talking, yeah, we've been talking a lot of tactics here. Um, you know, should you need an advisory team if you have if you're in that ultra high net worth segment, let's say thirty million dollars and above, uh, you've made the money. You're you know probably something about business, etc. Um, do you still need the advice? The, the resounding answer on our side is obviously yes. Uh, I think hopefully over this series, we've uh, discussed some of the tools and tactics that would help you to be even more successful and the benefits of having a team on your side. But I would argue today's topic is by far and away probably the place we can add the most value to our clients' lives. Uh, and it's really thinking about the purpose of money uh, and shifting and really understanding that money is a tool I think we live in such an individualistic society now. It's such a consumption-minded society. And then the natural tendency is, hey, I've accumulated all this money. What can it, what can it buy me? What can I do with it? Um, but really shifting that mindset to, but everybody actually has still the same anxiety about, you know, we want to raise our kids well. We don't want them to, you know, feel Spoiled. We want them to have, you know, responsible lives, et cetera. So how do you balance these things? So that's today's topic. You know, we're really going to dig into what do you do ultimately with money as a tool? What are some of the options available to you? We'll get into the charitable side. If you want to really benefit others and give that money away, uh, we'll talk about, you know, just kind of the estate uh, planning for a legacy in general. And then lastly, like, how do you actually prepare people? How do you prepare the next generation to, to tackle some of these challenges? So let's jump in there, uh, Justin. I'd love for you to hit on you know, some of that charitable side, that charitable intent, you know, if you have that, if that's something you're passionate about, maybe outline some options for us. Like, how do we plan through those things? Sure. So I think the the overarching question or challenge with this whole topic is, is one of being best in class. And what that is to each and every individual is different. Their individual impact, how they want, the legacy they want to leave is, is different depending on who you are. That could be your family, that could be charitable. I'll touch on the charitable side briefly here. But what we always want to bring it back to is how do you have the most impact? And so if it is a charitable goal that you have within your, your legacy or your definition of, of impact, does it make sense to have a foundation? So that's a very common tool that people go to. Do you want to set up your own 501c3, your own charitable organization? Or do you go and simply use something called a donor advised fund? It is, it is a phenomenal tool and incredibly efficient, easy to administer, very, very, very impactful. So and in my mind, I'm thinking about impact there is for every dollar that you've dedicated to some sort of charitable intent, how much then gets passed through to whatever cause that you're, uh, that you're, you're um, uh, focused on. And a donor advised fund is typically the, the, the place to start. Okay, let's, let's look at this. Let's make sure all of what you want to accomplish can be done through a donor advised fund. And if not, then let's go down, the, go down the ladder, so to speak, where, okay, maybe it does make sense to have your own personal foundation where there's a little bit more flexibility involved or um, uh, customization, right? Now, the, the wrinkle or complication there is there's a ton of administration. There's minimums in which you have to gift. And so there's trade-offs to all of this. And it, it, it goes back to having that frank, own, honest conversation with yourself, your family, as to what really is important and what your definition of impact is. What kind of, Brandon, what you were alluding to, I think often what happens with the ultra high net worth, the ultra wealthy, there's almost still this game to play or there's, there's this very strong ego involved. Um, and I get it. There's like this big competitive drive that typically exists. And what you can often see is people go to set up a foundation and it's an ego play, right? They get their own foundation or they do it to shelter their assets and pass it on more efficiently to the next generation as opposed to purely doing it for charitable intent. If, it, if those two things go hand in hand, there, there's something to that, but you don't set up a foundation just so you can put your entire family on the payroll and then deplete, you know, what 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 is left for charity. That is not 
impact. That is not best in class. That is not really taking ownership and owning your wealth as, as we, we really say and what we truly believe in. So this overall concept really does take some, some self-awareness, self-reflection and, and true ownership um, amongst all of these things that you hit on, but the, obviously with the charitable piece specifically. And I think that's a great point because again, whatever tool you're going to use, whether it's the private foundation, the 501c3, donor advised fund, there are some others, but the real impact comes right on intent. What is the intent of this? Um, and if we're starting to think about legacy, if you've accumulated enough and, and you're really uh, able to have this robust charitable strategy, how do you, you know, potentially uh, make that a part of your legacy? So what do you want this charitable program to say about you? And we would argue you could probably accomplish uh, that whatever it is for you, you could accomplish this with any of the three tools. It's really dependent upon, you know, what the uniqueness is you're trying to accomplish. So if you're trying to really do something truly innovative, then yeah, maybe a foundation or a 501c3 makes a lot of sense. If you're really just, you know, super passionate about supporting uh, those that have come before you in some of these charitable ventures, yeah, the donor advice fund's almost impossible to argue against. So, you know, really thinking through, I think the more softer side of these things, what's our intent? What's our plan? What's our legacy? What are we trying to, to really get into? And I think that's something that's really interesting to think about. You know, we often hear, uh, you hear this at conferences, you hear this with clients, you hear this in society, but you know, uh, we don't want to, I only want to leave so much money to my children. You know, I don't want to kind of taint them with the responsibility of inheriting all of this money. I mean, it was Warren Buffett's approach, Bill Gates approach. There's lots of well-known, we would argue that that's actually the wrong way to look at it. We'd, we'd actually challenge you to flip, flip your mind a bit because when you're, when you're doing that, if your only intent is just to offload this from your children, you're putting that on somebody else's kids, you know, like these are people, so they have parents, so they're kids. So all you're doing is defer diverting it from your children when you actually have the ability to train your children for call it 20 years to handle this wealth. I mean, in what other world do you get 20 years to form and shape the people <laughs> that are going to actually take your legacy and help live it on. And I, we kind of say that tongue in cheek, because let me tell you, this is the most difficult work yeah. you're probably ever going to do for sure. But you have the opportunity to do it, which we get really excited about. Right. We, we definitely get excited about, it. and it goes back to this whole idea of best in class, right? Best in class should involve establishing your intent. And, and this is, best in class is high performance as well, right? Going back to what I said earlier about competitive people, you should take that competitive drive and bring it into this overall overarching conversation to drive all this and to really stick, take a step back and say, what is, what is best in class? What is the, the high performing uh, avenue or high performing outcome for this particular conversation or, or whatever the, the topic may be? And it, it's exactly what you just said. I think the common, the easy way out, if you will, is just, oh, well, they shouldn't get, they should only get X amount of dollars, right? The, the high performing answer is exactly what you just said. No, let's, let's attack this head on or let's, let's communicate openly and go through the process, which is not an easy process at all, but it's a, it's a process and, and it's a, uh, it's a process that's rewarding and it's challenging and it's, and it will drive impact at the end of the day. So hopefully, there, there's some sort of conclusion within that statement where there's more to kind of the common practice within this, this whole overarching family governance legacy type conversation that it needs to go a, a layer, layer deeper or a level deeper, if you will, peel the onion and have those conversations. And don't just, don't just say, okay, yeah, we're going to have one conversation each and every year. Here's our family vision, values, and mission statement, et cetera. It's, it's way more than that. It, it's, it's, impactful conversations and uh, and sitting down in an in, with intent at the head at ahead of time to really meaningfully set the foundation set the groundwork for for the next generation we're talking about here but this can be applied to so many different uh, other avenues and people yeah no definitely and i think 
this is such a big meaty topic. And like you said, I mean, visiting it once a year, probably not sufficient, but also if, you, if you're sitting there going, well, shoot, my kids are in junior high, they're in high school, you know, it's never too late to start. You yeah. know, those are very formative years. You can still really have an impact here or even you know, we deal with some families that are, you know, later in life and they really are passing well to the next generation and their adult children, uh, again, not too, too late to start. It's just really reframing and making this a priority to sit down and have these conversations. And then on the flip side, you know, we have very young children. It's not too early to start. Right. I mean, introduce key concepts, uh, you know, for our clients and and even for our employees. So my daughter's birthday was yesterday. She turned four and the company sent her these uh, save, give and, and spend boxes. Right. And so it's very simply like just putting giving is a big thing in our family. And so putting intent around that, when you put the money in, you know, where it's going, why it's going there, small conversations, she's only four, she's not going to grasp all of it, but ultimately it is a building block to continue to re instill, you know, how do we value money? How do we build what wealth we have? Uh, and we talk a lot, this, even athletes, right? You, you've, demonstrated an incredible discipline and determination and hard work. Those are the values you want to pass on to your children. And that's going to benefit you certainly legacy wise with money and, and without money, but that's, what's going to end. You know, you're going to hear these terms, shirt sleeves to shirt sleeves, rags to rags in three generations. It is sad what ultimately happens to wealth and why it doesn't transfer. What we know from the data and the research is this is the whole reason it doesn't transfer. So if you think you want to have a family that lasts generation to generation, and it it absolutely can, it just takes some work and it takes some work in this area. Yeah, most definitely. And, and it's not to say that the wealth has to last generations to generations. Maybe your, your goal is it, it is all given away. But it's all given away collectively as a family and the values that are important to you are established within that conversation or within that intent, right? I think that's an important piece to highlight as well. Or, or maybe it is setting up a foundation and your family's super involved or it's a donor advised fund and your family's super involved and, and it is, it still carries out through multiple generations, but it's not necessarily directly owned by by second generation, third generation, whatever the case may be, but the values are driving the overall impact of the money, right? Money is a tool, in our opinion, to drive impact. What is that impact that is unique to each and every individual that and family that we work with? And it's a it's a really powerful, um, powerful framework and service that we get to work on and, and offer. Yeah, and I love that you kind of brought that up here at the end is it is individualized yeah. to everybody. There is no right way to go about it. Uh, the only right way is to be prepared and go through the work. Everybody has different values. Everybody has different mission. Everybody wants something different to come out of what they've built. Uh, and so it's just going through that process. We'd love to go through that process with you, by the way. Uh, if you're listening to this, you're not a client, uh, by all means, reach out to us. Uh, these are conversations we love to have um, because, you know, ultimately it's, it's, that's our mission. Our mission is to have a multi-generational business serving multi-generational families. Uh, and so this is a huge part of that. And we, we love doing that and having that conversation. So we'll close out, uh, for the day, but, uh, before we go again, shoot us a text 602-704-5574. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we'd love to have this discussion with you and until next time, own your wealth, make an impact and always be a pro. The information in this podcast is educational and general in nature and does not take into consideration the listener's personal circumstances. Therefore, it is not intended to be a substitute for specific, individualized financial, legal, or tax advice. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a final decision.